We welcome you to Trinity Lutheran Church, St. Joseph, Michigan, and to our online worship service. We're delighted you have joined us as we celebrate the Reformation. Son, 
and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God is our refuge and strength. Therefore, we will not fear. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift. If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We confess. Lord of hosts, hear our confession of sins and grant us your mercy and forgiveness. We have not trusted in your promise, protection, and strength, but have looked elsewhere for help and refuge. You alone have provided the remedy for that which truly causes our separation, troubles, and death. For the sake of Christ, your Son, our Redeemer, grant us forgiveness and deliverance from all that would keep us from your present help. We ask it in the name of Jesus. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. Because that river of grace and power has flowed over us in our baptism into the death and resurrection of Christ, in spite of our fear, the Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our fortress. By grace, God has created each of us and everything that exists, and in the person of his Son, entered our history and paid for our every sin and sin itself. In Christ's resurrection, God's promises have been made sure. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. I will speak of your testimonies before kings, O Lord, and shall not be put to shame. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Come, O children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will speak of your testimonies before kings, O Lord, and shall not be put to shame. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord of hosts, have mercy. For those living in fear because of sudden disaster, let us pray to the Lord. Lord of creation, have mercy. For those living in fear because of the evil intentions of people in power, let us pray to the Lord. Lord of lords, have mercy. For those living in fear because of evil forces within the church and oppression beyond it, let us pray to the Lord. Christ, our Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious Lord, Pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep us steadfast in your grace and truth. Protect and deliver us in times of temptation. Defend us against all enemies and grant to your church your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading for the Festival of the Reformation is recorded in Revelation chapter 14. Then I saw another angel flying directly overhead with an eternal gospel to proclaim to those who dwell on earth, to every nation and tribe 
and language and people. And he said with a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is recorded in Romans chapter 3. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be stopped and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For by works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight, since through the law comes knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law, although the law and the prophets bear witness to it, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness, because in his divine forbearance he had passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time, so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of our boasting? It is excluded. By what kind of law? By a law of works. No, by the law of faith, for we hold that one is justified by faith apart from works of the law. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the eighth chapter. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are offspring of Abraham, and have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say, You will become free? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. By grace I'm saved, grace free and boundless. My soul believed and doubted not. I stagger at this word of promise, as Scripture ever falsehood taught. Know then this word must true remain. By grace you None dare lay claim to merit our works and conduct have no worth. God in his love sent a redeemer, Christ Jesus to this sinful earth. His death did for our sin. God's Son, our only Savior, came down to earth to bear our sin. Was it because of your own merit that Jesus died your soul to win? No, it was grace and grace alone. 
that brought him from his heavenly throne. By grace this ground of faith is certain, as long as God is true it stands. What saints have penned by inspiration, what in his word our God commands, our faith in what our God has done, depends on grace, grace through his Son. Grace, mercy, and peace be yours from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. God's word for us is the first reading, recorded in Revelation chapter 14. Then I saw another angel flying directly overhead, with an eternal gospel to proclaim, to those who dwell on earth, to every nation and tribe and language and people. So far our text. Today we celebrate Reformation Sunday. It has been over 500 years since Martin Luther nailed the 95 Theses to the church door in Wittenberg. We thank God for using Luther to call the church to repentance and back to the gospel and the pure preaching of the word. Our text begins by saying that there was an angel flying directly overhead in this vision of John, with an eternal gospel to proclaim. To all who were on the earth, of every language, tribe, nation, and peoples. Some theologians already in Luther's day believed that this was a reference, a, a prophecy, if you will, of Martin Luther himself. In fact, Johannes Bugenhagen made this reference when he preached at Luther's funeral. However, the eternal gospel has been proclaimed and given by God to the church of all ages. And we, in our own generation, are hearers and heirs of this gospel, even as we also proclaim it with our faith and with our lives. According to this text, there is good news for those who dwell on earth. The gospel is good news. And in our day, it seems that the earth is in desperate need to hear good news. What is it that God sees when he looks down on our world? He sees much of what we see. Bloodshed and random acts of violence. Corruption and crime at all levels of government. Refugees fleeing war-torn countries and people dying of starvation and disease. He sees a world that is filled with sinners and that is in desperate need of a word of hope, in desperate need of salvation. Well, what does God see when he looks down on us? Even in our own homes, of the homes of Christian people, Families are fighting with one another because of selfishness and stubbornness. He sees gossip and backbiting as we try to get ahead of others, even in our own, whether it's in our own minds or among our associates, people we work with, or people we live with. He sees discontentment, greed, and complaining from the people who are living in the wealthiest nation on earth. The question could ask, be asked, is there any hope? Well, year by year, our country is less and less Christian. According to the latest Barna research, in the early 1990s, about two of 10 U.S. adults were churchless. In the early 2000s, it was nearly three in 10. Today, the churchless in our own society make up half of the adult population. 
In the same period, regular church attendance went from being judged as nearly every week to today, where regular church attendance might simply be once a month. It is estimated by church experts that once we are out of this current coronavirus pandemic, one-fourth to one-third of people will not return to church. Along with these alarming statistics, we see the moral standards of our country falling like a rock before our very eyes. Is there hope? There is. It comes from this good news, this message, this eternal gospel, which is to be proclaimed. Essentially, it's the message of God who loved this, loves this world that he created. Every nation, tribe, language, and people are loved by God. God sent his son into this world. The incarnation, God coming into the flesh, demonstrates God's concern for humankind. In the Old Testament, during the days of Noah, the Bible says, the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intention of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord regarded, regretted that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him to his heart. At that time, God sent floodwaters to destroy the earth. But in the New Testament, Instead of sending judgment, God sent his son to the earth, not to destroy, but to save. All the wickedness and evil intentions of man were laid on Jesus, who endured the wrath of God in our place. For all our sin and rebellion, for our selfish and immoral ways, God sent his son Jesus, and for that, Christ died. In that death, we are forgiven. What good news that is for us. What good news it is for the world. There is hope for this dying, desperate world, and that hope is in Christ. He is the eternal gospel that is proclaimed. This is a message that God has promised from the fall of man and sin to the very beginning all the way through the end of this world. Christ will be proclaimed and Christ will return. After Jesus rose from the dead and ascended into heaven, he sent his Holy Spirit to use the word, that good news, that message, and the sacraments as a way to bestow God's grace on people. And so we are blessed because we have heard that gospel proclaimed. We have been washed with the waters of baptism. We have been fed with the body and blood of Christ. Yes, there is hope. And it comes from that wonderful message of forgiveness and salvation in Christ. And as the angel was flying overhead, and John heard and saw in that vision of the revelation, he said, fear God and give him glory. God, unfortunately, does not play a prominent role in most people's lives. One might ask the question, what has happened to the fear of God? There was a time when people had a healthy fear of God. They recognized that he was the ultimate judge to whom everyone must give an account. They had a deep reverence and awe for the God who created all things. They exercised their faith and their adoration of this God through worship. They recognized that God is the eternal judge. He is the one to whom we give account. This fear and reverence of God is hard to find today. We have the attitude, it seems, that God can't touch us. We can act 
any way we want, at home, in his house, in the community, and we can get away with it. We won't be judged. We won't be condemned. In the end, no one will be condemned. That's the way the world thinks today. And so then man would glorify himself. So rather than fearing and glorifying God, modern man would glory in himself. We look at our technological accomplishments and we assume that man has done it himself. He is where he is because of his own ingenuity and his hard work. So we find then ourselves relying on our own judgments rather than on the judgment or the word of God. So in many ways we have become the center of the universe, the master of our own fate. But the message that is proclaimed from the angel flying overhead in Revelation The hour of judgment has come, and unbelief will stand condemned. In John's gospel, Jesus said, Whoever does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the one and only Son of God. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world, and people love darkness rather than light, because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light lest his works be exposed. The thing is, God knows our heart. He knows our thoughts, our words, our deeds. And the final judgment is approaching. That's what the book of Revelation tells us. It pictures God's wrath being poured out on the earth. It says, I heard the altar saying, Yes, Lord, God Almighty, true and just, are your judgments. And the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun and it was allowed to scorch people with fire. They were scorched by the fierce heat. They were cursed as they cursed the name of God who had power over the plagues. They did not repent and give him glory. They did not repent. That is the saddest verse in scripture. Because Jesus, who proclaims a gospel for the repentant sinner, it's a message of forgiveness and salvation and eternal life. But to those who will not repent, there is judgment. And the angel flying overhead also said, worship him. Yes, worship him. With a new song, the revelation tells us, A song about the Lamb who was slain, whose blood sets us free to be the people of God. Uh, A message, a song that is sung about the redemption we have in Christ Jesus, who died but now lives. As we praise him, we are blessed. Worship includes acknowledging God as our maker and our redeemer. Who of us has not been richly blessed by God? Consider all that we have in this life. Food and clothing, house and home, family and friends, all that we need for this life. But more than that, we have received the redemption that comes through the precious blood of Jesus. We've been forgiven of all of our sins, reconciled with our maker, and counted as the children of God, heirs of eternal life. Is not that reason to worship him. So we gather in worship. Here we are today to honor him, to give him our thanks and our praise. We honor him when we call upon his name in prayer and praise. We honor him when we acknowledge him to be the Lord. And mostly, we honor him when we receive the gift of salvation he gives. Forgiveness, life, and salvation come to us as a gift from God. And we serve God and our neighbor. As Luther says, Behold, this is the chief worship of God and the greatest thing to wit an upright Christian faith and love to God through Christ. Therefore, the first commandment is fulfilled by us through the precious blood of Christ. 
and God is faithfully served from the heart. Receiving the gift of God, trusting in him, is our act of worship. And in one other place, Luther said, the worship supreme and the one supremely necessary is to cling to the promise and the providence of God who has pledged himself to be our Father and to look for and expect from him help in time of need. Is Luther that angel flying in the mid-heaven with an eternal gospel to proclaim? Or are you the messenger of God to proclaim that gospel with your faith and life? There is no reason why we cannot understand it to be both and all who have given the gift of salvation from whatever tribe, language, people, or nation they have come, because they all are redeemed by the blood of Christ and have hope in this fallen and sinful world. And that hope is in Jesus. And the peace of God that passes understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let us also now join in the confessing of our Christian faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We also worship the Lord with our offerings. And we are very grateful and to God for his resources and the gifts he gives us. And we as a community of believers, Trinity Lutheran Church, thank you for your contributions and support of our ministry and the proclamation of that eternal gospel. Let us pray. Having confidence in our justification by grace through faith and having access to the Father in Jesus' name, let us turn our hearts in prayer on behalf of ourselves, the church, and all people according to their needs. Almighty God, you have shown your faithfulness by raising up those in every generation who call your church to repentance and renewal. Continue to raise up voices in our own day who herald the truth of your word and proclaim the faith in purity and truth against all enemies. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Lord, your word has been the light and salvation throughout the ages. Help us to bring your grace to those in darkness and grant them freedom through the forgiveness of their sins. Bless the missionaries serving far and near and new congregations they established in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of power and might, you have established governments and the order of law for the protection of all people and to preserve the freedom to worship you in spirit and in truth. Grant to our president, our governor, the Congress of these United States, the legislature of our state, wisdom, humility, and integrity, that all may enjoy true justice and the protection of life from its conception to its natural end. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy and gracious God, your power is revealed chiefly in showing mercy to those in need. Give to the sick healing, to the troubled peace, to the grieving comfort, and to the dying peace. Hear us first on behalf of those who are close and near to us, who are heavy upon our heart, According to your gracious promise, grant patience to those in tribulation and trial. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O faithful Lord, throughout the ages, you spoke hope through the prophets 
until that day when you delivered up your own Son to be our Savior and Redeemer. Bless those who are just learning the Gospel, and bless us with the desire to know and keep your word. Encourage your people to avail themselves of the grace of confession and absolution, so that they may forgive one another and live in the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God and Father, we pray you to grant us all good things that will benefit us in body and soul, and to preserve us in the true faith to salvation. Teach us to live in contentment with your will and purpose, and in the freedom you alone supply to serve you with all our heart, mind, body, and soul. All these things we pray in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, who has taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Take this. 